Alright, the last game for Tyrell Brotherhood and the last game for Brotherhood in general. Here we go. And we're up against a Night's Watch Brotherhood, so it's a uh, Brotherhood against Brotherhood. Uh, for this send-off, I was like, well, maybe this will be a send-off for Great Hall, too. You can see there's the Great Hall right there. I think this deck would also benefit from a sort of rewrite similar to the one that I gave the Targ version, where you take out Great Halls and put it trade routes back in. But I'm not really feeling up to doing it today. I was like, let's just keep the original deck list, play with the Great Halls one last time before they're gone forever. They won't literally be gone forever. I think Greyjoy is probably the only faction where I will be playing them after this, though, because Greyjoy uh, can actually protect the characters that you play with the Great Halls, and also because they uh, they are basically the faction that has the best like abuse of those six and seven cost characters that can turn them into game wins. It is a Wild Link's deck. It's got Egret, as he should be with Night's Watch Brotherhood. Uh, maybe Tyrell can still use Great Halls. Obviously not. I think I don't think this Tyrell deck should, but in general, because Tyrell is the other faction that can potentially make a sticky board of bigger characters by playing Marjorie and then putting like Lady in Waiting on her. That can also potentially work, I think. But I imagine for many other decks, Trey Browse will be the way to go going forward. If you want to like have a lot of money at least. Uh, oh, I should go first, right? Heads on spikes. This is this is going to hurt. Oh, okay. Oh, that did hurt, actually. No, that's really bad. I want that card. He's Night's Watch. He plays Craven. I did Varus's riddle and take his underground vault. I guess that's worth something. Should I just go all in and play Jackin? That would be hilarious. That's not worth it, because imagine that I marshal Jack and he just puts Craven on him. It'd be terrible. We definitely want Angai. Uh, yeah, I don't have any way to activate the Quartz here. So I guess I play this. Then I guess I milk this. What else am I going to put milk on? I mean, like Jon Snow or something would be better later. But taking the stealth off of Egret could actually matter. Now, the more I'm looking at it, the more I'm thinking taking that stealth off Eager, it probably didn't matter that much. It only really matters a lot if uh, he uses Eager to do an Intrigue. But if he does that, he could just also put in Satin, because why wouldn't he? And miss 4 to 4. It was probably a bad milk, all things considered. Oh well. You live and you learn, right? All right, well, no negative attachments. That's really good for us. Are we going to give... He doesn't have to give Varmir plus 8. I mean, he doesn't have to give him plus 5. You just give him, like, that wolf trait. Yes, waiting for opponents to use Varmir six skins. Well, you know that you're going to want to use Varmir to defend the military, no matter what, so just say bear or wolf. Nothing else makes any sense. He's probably trying to figure out some way to, like, minimize the damage from this Intimidate on Angai, but there's just not a good way for him to do it, I don't think. Gives Egret insight. I mean, giving something insight makes sense. I would have given it to Varamir, because I think Varamir is more likely to be guaranteed to win a challenge. Because the obvious move is that I'm going to do this challenge and Varamir will defend it. So if you put insight on Varamir, he would get it. 
Yeah, this way he's not going to get it because I'm going to intimidate Egret. He's playing triple satin. That's interesting. I mean, I understand why you do that. Because you want to use satin with Jon Snow. Not sure if it's really worth it at the end of the day. Well, this turn worked out. Winning that coin flip on initiative. Huge deal this turn. Quite substantial. He should block that? I don't, I don't know actually what's correct there. Now my watch begins. Imagine playing this card when Bound for the Wall exists. It's just like so much better, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I think he should block that. I guess it doesn't matter, because if he blocked it, then I wouldn't get the unopposed, but I get dominance. So it's exactly the same, no matter how you slice it. Uh, let's just get something cheap. We're low on money. Is he going to get Jon Snow? We got him. Oh, see? Bad milk. We should have held this milk for Jon Snow. Oh, this is where I'm really going to get in trouble for not redoing the deck and putting in a high initiative plot. <laughs> I'm going to suffer here because of it, 100%. False spring. That's really weird. Uh, let's show Randall Tarly. That's going to get discarded. That's fine. I need a wombo combo with Jack in, is what I need. Not sure if I'll be able to get it. Exactly seven, of course. So if he does it right, he will get triple intimidate. Which means there's no way I can use Jackin, probably. Oh, a meager contribution, of course. We always play lame cards. That being the case, we should probably go for Randall Tarly. Then I'm out of money. Do I still have more Ghoulis in this deck? I do, right? Not that it'll matter. Uh, Morghulis will not save me. I don't have any bodyguards. I, I shouldn't have knelt the uh, Garden Caretaker, huh? The extra gold doesn't do anything. I guess it matches his one gold for dominance. Now, like here, if I had a 9 initiative plot, then I would have played that and I could go first. Like if I had Calling the Banners, like I do in the Targ deck, I would have won on initiative and I have 6 gold. It would have been way better. I don't think uh, anything I do with the agenda matters. Say stealth. All right, so he did it wrong. He'll only get double Intimidate, which is still probably way too much for me to do anything. Wow, look at that. Let's pick King Beyond the Wall. In case of the King plot.
Oh, wait, no. He did it totally wrong. He only gets one Intimidate. He could have got three. Because what you do is you pick the, uh, the... Wait. Could he get three? He could definitely get two. I'm not sure if he could get three. Because he has to say, uh, cat to get... How do you say? To get the power icon to do three challenges. And then he can't get the Intimidate on Varmir. So he could only get two. But he could have gotten two for sure. I was going to play her with a noble cause. That really sucks. Giving Angai stealth, uh, you can see, was worth it because now I will either win military or intrigue. He can't win both of them. Why defend with... Oh, I guess because he gave Egret insight. That makes sense. But see, this is what I'm talking about with trade routes, because let's say next turn I play Noble Cause and I get 7, then these will be 11. If these was just uh, like Gates of the Moon and then like Rose Road or something, that would be plus 3. So if I play trade routes here, I would also have 11, and it wouldn't be dependent on having Great Halls. And that's with just 7 locations, and then trade routes can go way even bigger than that. All right, let's get a begging, brother. Wow, that was terrible. At least we got Bronzeon. I guess what would have been the worst is if we didn't even get a Lord. Just gonna wait, wonder, uh, when is he gonna reveal you win or you die? You know that's in his plot deck, cause when is he gonna do it? You knew it was coming. That very first freaking, uh, what do you call it? Heads on spikes. Took my blessed by the maiden. Absolutely disgusting.
Maester Balabar might be able to mess him up at least a little bit. The nice thing about Maester Balabar is he can counter Rattleshirt's Raiders. But because I played my milk poorly, the Rattleshirt's Raiders is not really the end of the world anyways. What's really funny though, now that I'm looking at this, is that I can give Bronzeon Roy stealth and then nuke his military challenge with uh, Balabar. <laughs> that would be really funny. Plus 8. That seems wrong. I don't think that matters. I would have definitely done Intimidate. Or, or uh, Extra Icon. I mean, you could also give him a Power Icon in Stealth. That would have been a decent choice, too. See, this is bad. There's no reason to do this. He's not doing his, uh, his stuff correctly here. If anything, you would give Intimidate to Egret. Or, like, give uh, Varamir Stealth and Power Icon and Intimidate. That would be better, too. This plus 8 Intimidate does not make sense, in my opinion. That's right, you can't stealth him. He has stealth. Oh, but because he put his own low strength characters on there, that makes sense. I should have put in Angai, I messed up. But at least I can do that. Uh, I want to use this on myself or on him. Mm, I'll use it on him. I don't know. Well, let's get rid of that, I guess. So if he had only attacked with uh, Varmir and Jon Snow, then I could use... How do you say? I guess, man, I don't want to kill these. Maybe I kill the Craven and guy? Sure. Then I could use uh, Balabar to kick Jon Snow out. But he didn't do that. So what I actually probably should have done with my agenda this turn was uh, give stealth to Angai. See, if he had given Intimidate to Egret, he could get double Intimidate this way. But for some reason, he didn't do that. Oh, I messed up. I forgot about his plot. That sucks. I always forget about that plot. I can't remember the last time that I've played a game where I remembered that plot when the Night's Watch player uses it. Rattleshirt's kind of a weird pick. I guess because he can give Rattleshirt stealth and then stealth Randall Tarly. But then Rattleshirt doesn't have like Intimidate, so what's the point? The exposed duplicity the shadows hate. I think I have zero shadows cards in this deck. Finally, I have some Randall Activators. 
my prospects looking up one nice thing i'll say he's had zero power icons the entire game so i'm still ahead on power so even though he's been dominating the challenge phases the game is not over by any stretch i do think that i will eventually lose at this rate when i have to play valar because i don't have any saves now if i can just get oh i don't know yeah, this is really bad, because he has three saves. I need to draw saves, or I will lose on the last plot of my plot deck. Oh yes, the lameness, meager contribution. Good job, sir. Oh, I really want to give this guy three. Let's just say two. So that we have a Randall stand available. Not a very good piece in Prosperity, but what can you do? My draws haven't been that good either. Rattle sure gain insight. That's weird. So no intimidate at all. He doesn't care about intimidate. It's kind of weird. If you're not going to do any intimidate, then he shouldn't have even picked himself as first player, to be honest. And still just doing a giant military. This doesn't make sense either. He might have forgotten that Begging Brother will cancel Jon Snow. That's unfortunate, but again, it's kind of like whatever. I can live with it. Well, I think this turn somehow went in my favor, so I guess I can't complain. Again, I think this is due to bad play on the opponent's part. He should not have done that kneel the whole board military. He also used his only power icon for it, which was not correct. Although, to be fair, it would be hard for Rattleshirt to do very much this turn because of the six strength Randall Tarly with Craven on him. Hard home. 
Ugh, we always play the lame cards. Yes, hard home, of course. Why would you not play that in a Wildlings Brotherhood deck? Makes perfect sense. One, one, that's funny. Well, at this rate, maybe I can win before I have to Valar myself. Just maybe. I think it has to be pulling the strings just because of the five gold, unfortunately. Trade routes, no! No, he's playing trade routes. Damn it. If I waited one more turn, I could have copied trade routes. <laughs> oh my goodness, he got me. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah, get out, win one. That's right. Put your head on a spike. He knew, dude. He knew. Trade routes is how you're supposed to go. It's not Great Hall. It's trade routes. He's clearly better at the game than I am. Garrison on the wall. This is after it's declared as a defender, right? Yeah, so we're still just going to be stealthing to get rid of that. Is that it? Is he done? He doesn't have any more cards? 11 gold, one card. Oh, it's milk. How unfortunate. How unfortunate. Haha. Uh -huh. Uh, I think it's better to give three gold. Because last turn I tried to save one for this and it didn't end up being relevant. If this turn goes like last turn, I'm going to win. So you better pull something out. <laughs> this has been a goofy game because it doesn't feel like I've been winning, but I've actually just been getting more power. Like, has, I don't think he's even declared a single power challenge the whole game. Still picks insight, doesn't pick intimidate. I mean, at this point, he's at zero cards, so I can kind of understand the insight pick. But the board situation is, like, so not good for him without Intimidate on his side. Without the double Intimidate, this seems extremely questionable. Yep. That was definitely not worth it. Literally just gave me a renown for no reason. See, last video was who needs Great Hall. This video is who needs trade routes. I'm still better even without trade routes. I can still win. Why are you kneeling your craven there, sir? You don't have Halder. You don't get to kneel your attachments. I think he's pretty dead because Bronzion will do a power challenge and win. And I don't think there's any way for him to stop it because he doesn't have any Intimidate. I never got to use Jacken. He's just been sitting here the whole time waiting his turn. 
If I had trade routes, I could have flipped trade routes and played my whole hand and won this game by way even more. Done a lot more damage. Thank you, Begging Brother. Begging Brother, the absolute MVP of this game. This is like close to an auto-include status at this point, Begging Brothers. So good. Alright, there's no way I'm winning this, am I? No. Uh, yeah, let's just do this. Right? Sure. I've really wanted a, a really funny way to use Balabar to like accomplish something, to use his ability, but I just don't think it's going to happen at this point. Just use him as the chump that he is. No, Jackin! No! <laughs> He's not going to get to assassinate anybody. I could have used Balabar on the military challenge. Because if I had Balabar standing, then he would have to declare, like, uh, the Rattleshirt Raiders and the Garrison together, or something like that. This way he can do the two military monocons together and win it. So I should have just used a Begging Brother to chump block the Intrigue. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Oh no, did he did he give up? <laughs> did he surrender? He realized that there was no way out. Ugh, what a fail. You're not doing your Wildling Brotherhood deck correctly, sir. You're not you're playing Garrison on the wall, which first of all, that's just a bad card, don't play that. But then you're also playing a meager contribution and hard home. No! No! Don't play those. Why are you doing that? Your brotherhood, you're not Banner Wolf. I, I don't think he's coming back, and I think there's no possible way that I won't win the game by just doing a power challenge with Bronze Yon. So we'll consider this one over. Good job, Great Halls. You, you pulled through. You did it for me. Definitely, if I had revised this deck the same way I did the Targ deck, it could have been a way more even stronger of a win. But I have to say, the opponent made some very questionable decisions and did not really abuse the agenda to the full extent that he could or should have. But that's what happens in this game. If you make mistakes, then sometimes you lose, when otherwise you could have won or at least had a better chance. That's no, just how it goes. I'm like reluctant to end the video because it feels like the end of an era. I don't want to say goodbye to the Brotherhood agenda, but this is it. This is the last one, dude. No more Brotherhood. Uh, I've got some Valyrian Steel decks that I've been testing. What did he draw? Oh, Bound for the Wall. Disgusting. That's a degenerate card, but my nice watch deck had that one because this just seems like kind of a broken card. <laughs> so uh, I'm going out of town for like two weeks-ish, so it'll be a while before I upload again. But when I come back, I'll be playing some Valyrian Steel. I've also been enjoying the Valyrian Steel agenda. Uh, sort of like Brotherhood, it sort of makes a sort of... In, the way that your deck looks and the way that it's built is fairly unique because of the agenda's restriction. And it also, you know, gives you some stuff that you can actually do that makes the game, like, a little more spicy during the actual gameplay. And all without feeling, like, too broken or abusable or anything like that. Like, it doesn't feel overpowered or busted when you play it or play against it. It, it actually feels more like an honest game, sort of like with Brotherhood. So, yeah. I've also been wanting to do a video talking about, uh, like, different types of decks, uh, gameplay styles, and, like, certain cards and the way that they affect the game. And talk about... Because what I say a lot in these videos is I'll say that certain cards are lame cards or cards are 
from you know decks are lame decks or oh this is not interactive and i've been thinking a while about doing a video where i sort of expand on my thoughts on that and explain why i think some cards or deck types are basically bad for the game and literally like unfun and uninteresting when they're used but i don't know if i'll be able to upload that before i leave so that might be like a lot later in the month but that might be tomorrow we'll see either way that's enough